Only 3% of those small business people, you keep talking about all the small business people that are going to get taxed, only 3% uh, would, would be affected by that. Or, or Do you quarrel with that figure? Is that a right figure or a wrong figure? Well, it may be 3%, but it's half of small business income uh, because uh, obviously the top 3% uh, have half of the, the gross income uh, for those companies that we would term small businesses. So how do they decide which companies they would term small businesses? H&R Block told Politico it has one and one half million small business clients, but extending the Bush tax cuts for the rich would benefit fewer than one half of one percent of them. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, fewer than 750,000 people, one quarter of one percent of the country, would be affected by the top rate. So how small can this top 3% of small businesses be if they make half the small business money? And, and, and let's remember the context back then. Dave Camp knows he is the ranking Republican member on the House Ways and Means Committee. To him, the definition of small business is a footnote. Literally, according to the Joint Committee on Taxation, 94% of all U.S. businesses in 2007 were S corporations, partnerships, or sole proprietorships, pass-through business types commonly used by small businesses. They call them pass-through companies because they file no taxes, passing through profits to the owners who report them on their individual tax returns instead. In short, they are considered small, not because they have a small payroll, but because they have a small number of owners. It's not the income that's small. It's not the number of employees that's small. It's just the total number of owners that's small. In the case of S-Corps, up to 100 owners. My colleagues and I have been listening. When politicians talk about small businesses, they are including any company that pays taxes as a pass through. House Democrats last week identified three limited partnerships that file as pass throughs a pipeline company called Enterprise, the Wall Street firm Kohlberg, Kravis, and Roberts, and the accounting firm Price Waterhouse Coopers. The Koch brothers' own website lists partnership after partnership after partnership that make up a small business empire of 70,000 employees. According to the Washington Post, more than one million people who reported at least 200,000 in income in 2008 were partnerships and S-corps. The richer you are, the more likely you are to call yourself a small business that way. 89% of Americans who make more than 10 million a year filed as a partnership or as an S-corp. In 2008, more than half a million of these supposed small businesses had more than a million in assets. In 2005, almost 20,000 of them had annual receipts of more than $50 million. But if you want to know which companies these are, you are out of luck because individual tax filings are not public record. Still, some have revealed themselves. The S Corp Association lobbying group is chaired by an executive of the Hillman Company, a small business founded by a billionaire. The S Corp Group president is from Venn Strategies, a small business whose chief operating officer is a former special assistant to President Bush, whose president used to work for Senate Leader Reid. Directors of the S Corp Group come from Farrell Gas, which provides propane and propane accessories with a small business touch to one million customers a small business. Coors Tech, North America's largest maker of technical ceramics, a small business founded by Adolf Coors, a small business. The Dead River Company, a small business with 1,200 employees, half a billion in annual revenue, and commercial real estate valued at $300 million, a small business. And a small business called McElhaney, the McElhaney family selling their Tabasco brand pepper sauce out of their kitchen to 160 countries. A small business. The Boston Globe revealed in 2007 that Fidelity Investments was becoming an S-Corp, a move that saved this small business hundreds of millions of dollars. Similar to how a scrappy little newspaper called the Tribune, as in the Chicago Tribune, made an extra $1.9 billion by converting to S-Corp status in 2008. 
As tax reporter David K. Johnston figured out, other companies get revealed as S-Corps when their filings become evidence in tax trials. That's how he identified one of the biggest small businesses in the world. Bechtel. A small business that builds airports, seaports, railroads, oil refineries, nuclear power plants. But back when it was just ye old Bechtel shoppy, they built the Hoover Dam. And today, 49,000 employees, $31 billion in revenue, the world's number one engineering and construction firm, a small business. Companies decide who are the actual people who would benefit from the Republican tax cut for the richest small businesses. Him for one. Bloomberg News reports the president and other big authors and actors and celebrities, even hedge fund managers, file as S-Corps to save on taxes. Nor is Mr. Obama the only famous S-Corp owner. Recognize this guy? How about now? Thanks to court documents reviewed by Countdown, we know one of Texas's two richest men in the 1990s became an S-Corp back in 1991. Senator John McCain knows about S-Corps. Small businesses are the job generator of America. Mrs. John McCain filed as an S-Corp back in 2006, a small business owner who owns a massive beer distributorship and reported income of more than $6 million. And then there's small businessman Philip Anschutz, a small businessman who gave 30000 to the Senate Republican Campaign Committee last year and 15000 to the House, on top of his family's more than half a million to Republicans overall. Mr. Anschutz owns at least a part of more than 100 small businesses, small railroads, small oil companies, small sports stadiums, small arenas, a small national movie theater chain, a small half of small major league small soccer, the LA Kings, the LA Lakers. His small business entertainment company likes to clean out the old garage now and again to put on small shows by Bette Midler and share. Mr. Anschutz even owns small newspapers, including the Weekly Standard. Countdown has even identified one S-Corp owner whose reclusive founder and chairman actually works out of these very NBC headquarters in New York. Hi. Technically, I'm a small business. As promised, let's bring in Pulitzer Prize winning tax reporter David K. Johnston, the author of Free Lunch, How the Wealthiest Americans Enrich Themselves at Government Expense and Stick You with the Bill. He's also a columnist for Tax Notes. David, thanks for your time again tonight. Thank you, Keith. First of all, have we explain what's going on correctly, and, and can you flesh it out a little bit for us? Uh, everything you said was correct, and it's actually much worse than this because, <laughs> oh, in addition to being pass-throughs, in addition to being pass-throughs, uh, many of these enterprises benefit from all sorts of tax rules that allow them to take money now and then pay their taxes ten or twenty years in the future. Uh, that's an enormous benefit and a subsidy that ordinary working people who have their taxes taken out of their paycheck before they get it are in effect financing for these businesses. In addition, uh, about 900 of these small corporations, it looks like from the statistics, paid no income taxes even at the personal level of the owner. Uh, when we think about small businesses colloquially, or as we would say, you know, using English, we think of the mom and pop hardware store. We think of some online company that's run out of somebody's home. Some employee somewhere is trying to break out on his own and starts his own company selling the proverbial widget. Are any of those kinds of businesses in the range that Republicans are trying to protect in their supposed so-called benefits for so-called small businesses? Well, Keith, yes, there are some. I mean, you can have an author, maybe my next book, I'll make enough money to uh, uh, be coming to your opprobrium for it. Yep. Uh, there are people who may own a chain of fast food stores or a particularly successful group of liquor stores, but they're a very small portion of this. There are about, as you mentioned, 15,000 S-Corps that have an average revenue of 150 million. And then there's another 18,000 partnerships that have average revenue of about 137 million. These uh, rich guys, though, paying the top rates, they'd have to pay a lot more in taxes if the Democrats don't renew the, uh, the top Bush tax cuts, right? Well, yes and no. <laughs> they do, after all, have 
uh, access to tax shelters. There are all sorts of fine rules. The reason the tax code is so thick has nothing to do with ordinary Americans. It has to do with favors bought with campaign donations. But yes, overall, they will pay higher taxes, which will go to provide better infrastructure so they can move their goods and services, educate people so they have people to buy their products, et cetera. Uh uh, just putting aside for a second the Orwellian quality of this whole thing, that it, peace is war and, and big business is small business. In terms of hiring, regardless of the size of business, the GOP argument is that, that uh, raising taxes would curtail new jobs, would curtail hiring. Is that really the biggest factor or don't businesses wind up deducting those costs um, in any case from their own taxes and their own expenses? Well, economic theory says there should be less job creation when we raise taxes. Well, Bill Clinton had Congress raise taxes in 1993, and eight years later, uh, uh, they were cut, and again, 10 years later, under President Bush. During Bush's eight years, three and a half million jobs were created. During Clinton's years, six times as many, 21 million jobs. In fact, during the Clinton years, more jobs were created in those eight years than in the 20 years of Ronald Reagan and both Bushes in the White House. So I think you have a tough time making that argument. Mm -hmm. What matters is what the taxes are spent on. Last question, is there law or code somewhere that defines what a small business is? Is, that, are there, is there actually a, just a, 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 a semantical violation here or is there something more to it? No, this is essentially semantical. I mean, the SBA says if you have 500 or fewer employees, you're a small business. So certainly by the definition of the Small Business Administration, many of the companies that we've talked about are not small businesses. And remember that small businesses also destroy many jobs. It's a relatively handful of little companies mm -hmm. that go on to become big companies. The, the gazelles they're known as, like say FedEx that went from nowhere to being a big company very quickly. David K. Johnson, professor of Sy at Syracuse University. Great thanks for your time tonight and for your help on all of this. Glad to be here. Here's another shock. The billionaires who benefit from being small businesses, trademark, use their money to fund Republican causes like tax cuts for small businesses, trademark, like them. It's not just those small businessmen, the Koch brothers. Another small businessman we mentioned is funding Pennsylvania Republicans. 